Thank you very much, uh, Jomi, for that uh, kind introduction. I, was al I would also like to thank the organizers, uh, Jesse Randall and, uh, of course, uh, the whole team, uh, because you never get to organize uh, a conference like this uh, on your own. Uh, yeah, for uh, having giving me the opportunity uh, to speak uh, over here and uh, sharing uh, some of the great variety of agroforestry systems uh, we have in uh, in Europe. And uh, so, in addition to um, yeah, the agroforestry systems in Europe, I also will uh, tell a little bit about the European Agroforestry Federation, what they're all doing in order to promote agroforestry systems in uh, Europe, and also hopefully really get the policy people on board, because that's very important. And let's see. So um, first of all, uh, we'll also define agroforestry, because uh, in Europe uh, we have a slightly different definition uh, from you folks here in the US. And um, then uh, I'll uh, go into the Ag Forward pro project. This is a big uh, European uh, agroforestry project, and it has 26 partners in 14 uh, countries all across Europe. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, look into one of the studies uh, they did. And then uh, we'll um, look at the, four, uh, yeah, the uniqueness of agroforestry in Europe. It uh, has a really nice combination of heritage systems and modern agroforestry systems. And then the four groups uh, we usually categorize agroforestry in. So these are the uh, cultural uh, high value systems and uh, the second group is the high value tree systems such as uh, walnuts and fruit trees. And the third group is arable systems and the fourth group is the silvopastoral systems or the livestock systems. And then uh, we'll, uh, I'll tell a little bit about uh, the actual Agroforestry Federation. And then we'll, um, I also have to touch base a little bit about the common agricultural policy. I, well, I won't make it too boring because, of course, <laughs> it's been a long day already. So uh, not, uh, I'm not actually going to put actual policies up here on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then, uh, yeah, what role does Europe actually play in, in changing this common agricultural, agricultural policy and maybe we can get uh, agroforestry being part of the common agricultural policy. <coughs> so um, what I already said, um, defining agroforestry, so um, we had, uh, I'm actually part of this uh, big uh, European agroforestry project, it's an FP7 project uh, funded uh, through, uh, from uh, Brussels and it's called Ag Forward. And uh, we uh, defined agroforestry as really being the integration of uh, trees and cr and uh, or shrubs and crops or uh, livestock, and they have to be both on the same field, but the trees could also be surrounding the field, so the hedgerows. And over here we see two uh, old systems. So this is the Montado in Portugal. It's a very similar system also from the Dehesas in Spain. So these are the oaks, maybe familiar by some of you folks. And this is in the UK, some of the old uh, hedgerow systems. So this is a preliminary study that was carried out uh, as part of the Ag Forward project. One of the goals of the Ag Forward project is really to promote agroforestry. But first we also would like to have an idea how much agroforestry is actually already out there in, in Europe, which is has turned out to be a challenge, so it was mainly a literature review. And uh, yeah, so some of my uh, colleagues, they went through all the literature, published literature about agroforestry in Europe to kind of get a hand of how much agroforestry do we have on the ground. So that was, uh, yeah, Michel Den Herder, uh, he, he's based in, in Finland at the European uh, uh, Forest Institute. And that's one of the partners of the Ag Forward project. So um, what I already said, so uh, agroforestry is really the integration of trees or shrubs and uh, livestock. So um, uh, yeah, for that, uh, Paul Burgess, who is actually the coordinator of the Ag Forward project, he uh, designed this graph. So really everything, um, yeah, this is all agroforestry, so we have the combination of the crops and the trees. So those are the silvo-arable systems, as you guys all know, 
or the trees and the livestock, and those are the sylvopastoral systems. But in Europe, we actually have quite a few systems that have all three components. So those are the pastoral silvo arable systems, or whatever you want to <laughs> call them. So it's sometimes quite a challenge to actually categorize some of these systems. What I said, we, ha we make those four categories, but a lot of the heritage systems, they could also fit in the livestock or the silvopastoral system, for example, or the silvo arable. So um, yeah, what are agroforestry systems then? So is this actually an agroforestry system? So these are uh, dwar uh, dwarf shrub heathlands. So while well, they're being grazed, so we actually have a combination of a shrub and uh, livestock. So what do you guys think? Is this agroforestry or is it not? I mean, this is all some of the challenges we're, we've run into uh, trying to stratify agroforestry and trying to come up with a total number of hectares or acres, if you want, uh, of agroforestry in Europe. So sometimes it's really difficult. You're nodding your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does this mean it's not agroforestry? Well, it's an integration of trees and shrubs, but I don't see trees at all. No, it's an integration of shrubs. So it could be trees or shrubs it's together with livestock or crops. <laughs> The header, those are shrubs. Is it intentional? <laughs> Good question. Ah. Yeah, because if we don't have the animals graze the header, then it will turn into forest. If it's intentional, by the way. Mm-hmm. Then it's Yeah. So yes, it is agroforestry. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what I already said, in um, Europe we have this really nice mix of the heritage systems which, uh, with the high culture nature value and also there's a lot of new uh, research going on that hopefully will result in very innovative uh, agroforestry systems, which is also one of the goals of the Ag Forward project to make agroforestry more innovative. So these again are the four categories um, we're looking at. Try to ca categorize agroforestry in, uh, in Europe. So we have here the high nature value systems and this is actually a picture from uh, Germany, one of my field sites. It's the Spreewald, which is a flood plain. And um, it's a, a silvopastoral system. Right now the cows are not in there, but <laughs> they, they, believe me, they, they are part of the year. And uh, this is uh, in Greece. It's a high uh, value tree system. These are olive trees. And um, this is another uh, one of our sites also in Germany. It's an alley cropping system uh, combined with um, wheat. So it's an arable system. And then here we have one of our livestock systems, also one of the projects. This is uh, actually an apple orchard. And uh, the sheep, this was t day two that we, they had the sheep in there. And, uh, Looks like they're starting to prune uh, the apple trees. <laughs> and um, so, uh, yeah, the first category, so the, uh, the um, high nature value uh, systems. So, um, yeah, this was actually supposed, uh, proposed by the uh, European Environment Agency. Um, mm, yeah, it's really also, um, yeah, to promote uh, biodiversity of uh, farms. And this is actually what's going on as part of the changing uh, changes in the common agricultural policy. Uh, the most recent common agricultural policy is really more interested in environmental issues, uh, re also related, of course, to climate change. And uh, yeah, examples of this system are the Montado uh, in uh, Portugal or the Dehesa in uh, uh, Spain or uh, yeah, other uh, wood uh, pasture systems uh, and wood uh, parklands in the UK, for example. And also reindeer uh, husbandry in Scandinavia is also an example of agroforestry, which is another debatable one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, what I said, we try to add up all the numbers. So here are uh, some of the literature that was reviewed. So we look at all the different systems. So we have the Mediterranean uh, uh, 
yeah, oak systems. So again, that's uh, the Hessa in Spain, Montado, and those are yeah, very big numbers. Uh, so this is all in uh, hectares. For you guys who want acres, uh, you have to multiply by 2.47 or 2.5 is also fine. Uh, and then we have other, some other um, oak-based systems all uh, around the Mediterranean. So in total, that's uh, almost 7 million hectares. So it's a fair bit. And um, then some other systems, and they add up, uh, so other wood pastures, they add up to 400,000. And uh, the scattered head structure, so that was one of the pictures in the UK, for example, as well, um, they add up uh, to another almost 500,000. And then, of course, we have the reindeer husbandry. We see that that's a very fast area of if we consider it agroforestry. And that's also what, that's why we added up the numbers of it and without the reindeer husbandry, because we're, well, different people will say different things, whether this is agroforestry or not. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For you folks. <laughs> and uh, so this is, um, yeah, the first example. So another picture of the Montado. So really what the, yeah, originally this was forest, so really what the people did, they actually cleared the forest and they left one of the, yeah, a couple of these high value trees there. And um, they're different systems, so they could be uh, silver arable, so the oaks could be combined with some cereals, or often they are, they're also combined uh, with livestock. Uh, pig for, pigs, for example, uh, Iberian pig is uh, quite a common uh, um, uh, animal combined with these uh, home oak systems. So that's uh, this one. And they're uh, being used for uh, the v very high value uh, ham. So the Serrano ham and some other uh, yeah, expensive hams. Uh, they come from the Iberian pig. And um, then, uh, of course, we have cattle as well and uh, turkey also. I'm not sure if that's really a traditional uh, livestock, but and uh, well, y what you see that these turkeys they they really love the trees. They 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 need the shade, and that's really what why these trees are here. That it's not just for for us for, to feel comfort, but also the, the animals they want to be comfortable as well and and happy, I guess. And uh, well, then you have the cork oak as well, which is a, a big component, especially in Portugal. Uh, the, the bark of the trees are, is being harvested, I think, every seven years. And uh, it's used for corks. <coughs> and then we have a similar uh, system here in uh, the UK. And uh, it's a uh, yeah, parkland. So it has all, uh, well, again, it's a, it's a silvo pastoral system. And it has all different uh, trees, <coughs> and also different uh, animals that uh, roam, kind of roam free in these uh, these uh, different sites. And then, uh, actually, surprising type of animals that can be found in agroforestry systems as well: uh, some deer. They're also enjoying the shade from uh, the trees. And this is, uh, yeah, a traditional English uh, parkland. So I don't know if they're being hunted now, but I think I'm pretty sure traditionally the, these uh, deer were hunted. And right now they're probably just grazing and nibbling on the, the leaves. And this is a really ni <coughs> nice one. Uh, it's in uh, Transylvania, and it's very interesting. These are also old oaks, and uh, they're very ancient. And there was a study done that actually showed that these ancient uh, oak trees, they were present in these agroforestry systems, but not in adjacent forests. So these agroforestry systems, they're very important uh, for uh, keeping these ancient uh, trees alive. And then uh, also a very exciting uh, story from Greece. This is from the island of Kia, and uh, it's, which is uh, close to Athens. And uh, these are uh, Felonia oak uh, stands, and uh, they produce these uh, huge uh, acorns. 
and you can use these acorns uh, to make flour actually and uh, also I heard some other acorns you can make co even coffee out of and then uh, this lady uh, Mary I think she's called but it doesn't really matter she uh, she makes some cookies out of that and also um, traditionally these uh, acorns um, the, um, the yeah, the, well, the, the part that's around the acorn, how do you call that? The shell, the shell yeah. The shell was used uh, for tanneries, or it was sent to tanneries that had been done until the 1960s, but because of, uh, well, artificial uh, paints, it wasn't needed anymore. But, uh, yeah, there was a 49-year uh, break and uh, in 2014 was the first time that they uh, harvested these shells again and they were shipped out and they, they had 35,000 uh, kilograms of these shells that were sent to uh, tanneries again. And it's very exciting that it's all happening in Greece because you guys know about the economic crisis in Greece. So this project is actually helping the whole island of Kia. Uh, and uh, the, the whole lo uh, local community is actually helping collecting all the acorns and by doing so they're actually earning about 50 euros a day by collecting the acorns which is more than they could, would otherwise earn. So they're, they're very happy about this. And another uh, traditional uh, system is the bocage in uh, France. Yeah. These are present in uh, Normandy and uh, around uh, La Loire and uh, here you see a traditional system and that really shows you how old these systems are. They, they were at their peak between uh, yeah, eight, yeah, the 18th century until the mid 19th century and well unfortunately some of them are lost right now but uh, hopefully but through the, the f yeah, the Ag Forward project and other agroforestry colleagues. Um, we're turning times around and uh, it looks like right now that uh, agroforestry is actually being introduced again into the common agricultural policy and by doing so hopefully uh, not, yeah, not more of these uh, nice agroforestry systems will be lost. And it's really a, a combination of uh, different trees they have in the system in the landscape. And this is a really neat picture again of the UK. Uh, you see the uh, old hedgerows here, but it's also combined with a new agroforestry system. Here you see uh, the alley cropping system. And this is a farm owned by actually people from Switzerland. And uh, they're also working together with us. And the, the alley cropping system consists of willow and hazel, and then they, they're testing uh, different uh, wheat species. And this is again the site in Germany. And so this is a uh, well, familiar picture. And this is actually what it looks like uh, from uh, the air. So it's very exciting you have these hedgerow systems and uh, these used to be old drainage ditches. And <laughs> they, yeah, they already built uh, or planted these hedgerows right next to the drainage ditches, but now the drainage ditches also have uh, filled up. And um, so um, the distances between uh, these hedgerows, uh, they're actually only about uh, 40 meters. So they're really uh, close to each other. And uh, some of the hedgerows are as wide as uh, 25 meters. So the, yeah, these uh, hedgerows, they're taking away quite a bit of um, area from uh, the farmer. So this is, this is one of the things we're going to look into. Uh, how can we uh, yeah, harvest part of the hedgerows uh, so there's only about 10 meters left, which is actually the maximum that we want these hedgerows to be. And then um, in addition to that, we have to uh, kind of rejuvenate part of, um, we, we have to rejuvenate part of the hedgerows as well and fill them in. Uh, with longer lived trees and also uh, look at uh, regrowth. So we may, ha may have to do some uh, fencing because uh, currently uh, the, the cattle are actually walking through the hedgerows as well. And uh, well, this is um, the reindeer husbandry that's uh, going on uh, in Scandinavia. 
So um, yeah, formerly uh, people actually were um, gathering these reindeer on foot or on with skis. And uh, later, of course, they had the snowmobiles. And right now, they're even using helicopters. But uh, as a part of uh, our Ag Forward project, we're also testing GPS collars on some of the reindeer. So uh, they're even uh, easier to track down. <coughs> so um, this is a, a nice example of one of the reindeer. So yeah, what I already said, should this, uh, yeah, is this actually agroforestry? I mean, uh, the reindeer are rounded up once a year. So and but most of the year they're almost like wild animals. So it's <laughs> so um, so the next category is the high value tree systems. Um, so um, they're um, yeah planted randomly or systematically. They could also be in rows, and it's mainly uh, fruit trees, which also includes the olives which is it's kind of a, a fruit, and uh, also uh, high-value timber trees, uh, such as walnut and cherry. So uh, looking at the, at the numbers for that, um, so um, most of the fruit tree systems, they're actually in 11 different countries across Europe, and uh, there are over a million hectares of those. And, um, Olives, uh, yeah, mainly of course in the Mediterranean because they don't grow anywhere else. And uh, then we also have the pine nut trees in Italy. And uh, some chestnuts, mainly, yeah, also in the warmer countries in Southern Europe. And then we have the crop trees as well. And they all add up to about two and a half million hectares. So um, this is one of the systems that, uh, well, it, across 11 different countries, uh, or all well, these, yeah, 11 different countries in Europe. So this is the straw oaks. So um, they consist out of fruit trees, uh, apples, um, plum, and pears. And they uh, used to be very common in uh, across Europe, but unfortunately, because of the European policy, uh, they, a lot of them were removed, about 50% uh, of these systems, they were lost uh, during the last 20 years or so. But right now, uh, there seems to be a, a light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, these, yeah, they're actually being funded by non-government agencies again, but not by the government, unfortunately. And uh, in it, so there, most of them are silvopastoral systems, but some of them also uh, combine cereals. But this is mostly at the beginning of uh, the rotation, so the first five, maybe ten years when there's still enough light. And this is a similar uh, system, but in France, Prévergé. And um, yeah, it also has fruit trees and also peach and apple as well, as you see here. And it combines also livestock and sometimes also cereals. And uh, this is uh, olives. So um, yeah, most of the olives are yeah, produced in the Mediterranean. Actually, worldwide, 98% uh, of uh, olive production is taking place in the Mediterranean. So it's quite impressive. And uh, um, yeah, if you look at these systems, they're often also combined with different uh, types of livestock. And uh, this is a very interesting uh, system. Uh, this is where they combine trees with wine. And um, these are actually the trees, and they're, they're being used as life trellises. So if you look clearly, you see, you can see here there's wine uh, growing. So it's So you actually have two crops, and in addition to that, you can also have a cereal or livestock again. So this is the system they have in Italy. And in uh, Portugal, actually, the whole uh, green wine, Vinho Verde, they, they uh, have that grow on trees or hedge structures that were tra traditionally actually almost around all agricultural uh, areas. 
And uh, now we come to the third uh, group of agroforestry systems. Uh, they're modern agroforestry systems. These are uh, actually the most, yeah, the, probably the group that most of you are familiar with. So these are the windbreaks and the alley cropping systems and uh, hedgerows and also buffer strips. Um, you can find these all over Europe, but we don't really know how, yeah, what area, what extent. So these are the only numbers we have, but we're pretty sure that there, there are more out there. And um, this is uh, one of our, this is the same uh, system in, in Germany. So uh, this is another alley cropping system in, uh, in France. Uh, you see the combination of olives and uh, lavender. And uh, sometimes this lavender is actually, a, well, it's of course, uh, good for pollinators as well. And sometimes some of these aromatic uh, plants are also taking away, yeah, taking away pests. So we're, we're actually researching that as part of the Ag Forward project as well. <coughs> and this is a project, uh, one uh, in the UK. Uh, so these are, are um, poplars, intercrops with uh, barley. And this is again our system. Uh, in Germany, with the black locust and poplar and wheat. And this is the UK system. This is part of that uh, traditional hedgerow system. And here you see uh, yeah, a close up of uh, the willows and the different uh, types of wheat. You can see very neatly how all the blocks with the different weeds and they're really testing uh, how shade tolerant these uh, weed varieties are. So you actually see that the ones in the middle, they, they're quite a bit higher. So it's very exciting that the hypothesis actually came out. <laughs> and uh, so this is, uh, yeah, the livestock systems. Um, what I already said, uh, we not just need happy people, we need happy pigs as well. So <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're really resting here in the in between the willows. And so in addition to um, yeah, a shelter, uh, these uh, systems also uh, reduce ammonia and also uh, odors. So it's, uh, this is actually often uh, some one thing that uh, people forget, but some livestock systems, they can uh, cause some uh, odor problems uh, for the neighbors. So here are the sheep again, close up. They're nicely nibbling away. And uh, this is another uh, silvo uh, pastoral, uh, pastoral system in uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, the cattle and also, uh, yeah, they're grazing, grazing away here. Again, the pigs. And uh, these are some uh, happy chickens. Uh, they're they're actually, this is also uh, yeah, one of the success uh, stories in the UK. Uh, these uh, chickens are uh, used to, to produce uh, woodland eggs. And these eggs are, uh, yeah, of course, they're, yeah, they're from agroforestry chickens. And they're actually being sold at a premium price. So UK citizens, they're actually willing to pay a premium for agroforestry products, which is very interesting. But that's not the case in all European countries. I know, for example, in Germany, uh, customers wouldn't be able, uh, willing to pay extra money for for, for agroforestry products. So each country has different interests. And because of that, you have to market agroforestry products differently in each of the countries in Europe. And it might also be different in the US, in different states. People might have different ideas about uh, agroforestry products. So, um, well, it's all great that we know how much agroforestry, but it would be uh, interesting to actually know what area that actually is of uh, um, productive agricultural land. So um, in order to do that, we uh, added up all the numbers here of agricultural areas. And uh, it turned out that uh, agroforestry is uh, at least, according to these numbers, I'm actually very convinced that there is actually way more agroforestry out there than these 6.5%. Uh, and if we, for example, look at Greece and Portugal, it's actually 
over 50 percent of uh, the pr of the agricultural uh, productive area that is considered agroforestry. And in Spain, it's quite high as well. So. Um, what I already said, uh, so these are the 6.5 percent that's actually if you don't include the area with reindeer husbandry. So if you would include that, it, it would be 32 percent actually. So, and, uh, well, and maybe if you include header as well, it would be <laughs> even higher. So um, <laughs> we really need agroforestry, that's what the sheep tell us. So what do we do about this? So here is where uh, the European Agroforestry Federation comes into play. The sheep ask us, so we better do something. So the European Agroforestry Federation is actually a very new uh, associa association. It was founded in 2011. And um, it really aims at promoting agroforestry in Europe. And uh, currently it has about 200 80 members in 20 countries across Europe. And uh, really what they're doing is they're lobbying. So a lot of my colleagues, they regularly go to Brussels to try to talk to the politicians over there and explain them what agroforestry is. Because of course, most people don't know what agroforestry is. They know agriculture, they know forestry. But putting the two together, it's unheard of often. <laughs> and uh, they also organize a biannual congress, so kind of like this meeting here. And we actually uh, leap your conferences, uh, your conference dates. So we had a conference last year and we'll have another one next year. So if you're interested in learning more about agroforestry in Europe, you're more welcome uh, to come to Europe as well. The next one will be in Montpellier in France. So I'll uh, <laughs> keep you informed about that. And um, European Agroforestry Federation also uh, works on uh, research. They're actually also part of this uh, Ag Forward project. And uh, they're also working with some other uh, research groups. And they also produce a monthly newsletter. And uh, what I promised, <laughs> a little bit about the common agriculture policy. Um, it's a really old policy. It's actually the first uh, European-wide policy. Um, the European Union uh, exists since 1954. And uh, the, the idea about the common agricultural policy was actually in 1961. And it came out in 62. And the first goal was really food security. And it worked so well that uh, in the 1970s and 80s, there was actually uh, and overproduction of food in Europe, which resulted in uh, butter uh, mountains and milk uh, lakes, <laughs> as they call it. <laughs> and, uh, that, uh, and yeah, over time, they really adapted uh, the common agriculture policy depending on the, the current uh, interests. So um, yeah, in the 90s, uh, due to the summit in Rio, of course, em environmental issues uh, were uh, priority number one. And then in, a, in the yeah, years uh, 2000, it, it shifted more again towards uh, economics and uh, social and cultural issues. And also, uh, they removed uh, uh, the, the, the subsidies. So it changed more to a market-oriented uh, uh, system for agricultural products. And then, uh, of course, uh, in 2007, uh, there were more and more countries that became part of the European Union. And because of that, uh, uh, Europe became more diverse, and with that also the ag agricultural production and products. So that because of that, the common agricultural policy also needed to adapt. And uh, then uh, after that, uh, right now, of course, uh, we need to uh, combat uh, climate change and uh, also support uh, rural development, because that's what you see a lot in a lot of uh, European countries. A lot more and more people, they. Uh, they moved, uh, moved to the urban areas. <coughs> and I had a nice video here, but it doesn't seem to work. Because <laughs> I don't have, wi we don't have Wi-Fi on this computer. But then I was telling about uh, a farm in Portugal. 
uh, by Alf it's owned by Alfredo Selim, and it's a very exciting agroforestry system. I think they have 300 different products they produce there, and I can, well, the link is there, so if once this uh, presentation is going to be online, you can all watch it on YouTube, I think. It's only a four minutes uh, movie. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I, one of the things that uh, Europe is trying to do is include uh, uh, agroforestry in the, within the common agricultural policy. Um, actually, um, in the most, yeah, the t two most recent uh, common agricultural policy, uh, Europe already ex yeah, exceeded to do so. Um, so for the last uh, agriculture policy, uh, ag yeah, um, ag agroforestry was included in uh, this Article 44, and that was uh, being carried out in Measure 222. So um, the plan was to, um, in yeah, establish agroforestry uh, sites at all these uh, dark green uh, locations. So, uh, and that uh, would have resulted in uh, 32. Thousand hectares, but as things usually go, it, they don't really go as planned. So unfortunately, um, these were uh, all the measures that were uh, similar to agroforestry, such as a forested agriculture, afforestation of agricultural land, which uh, was actually uh, quite high. But if we uh, look at agroforestry, the the percentage of what was planned. Um, in uh, 2007 and what was actually on the ground or the, the amount of money that was spent in 2012 was only 1.8 percent. So most of the money uh, wasn't used unfortunately. And well, why was this? Well this is because uh, the definition of agroforestry was very restricted so they were only looking at uh, linear uh, uh, structures um, and they didn't include uh, groves, hedges, and the silver pastoral system. So basically most of the old systems, they were not included, which was very unfortunate because those are, well, that's the biggest area of agroforestry in Europe. And also the number of trees per hectare was really low. So because of that, people actually, most agroforestry systems had more than 50 trees per hectare. So this policy actually resulted in a, remo a removal of trees and a reduction in agroforestry in some areas. And uh, yeah, so I also have to say, so there's a division, uh, there are two, uh, two different components uh, within the agricultural policy. The pillar one is really for the old systems to kind of, uh, for um, um, biodiversity. So Farmers in, in Europe, they get subsidies uh, if they have biodiverse or farms with high uh, biodiversity. So they would get subsidies if th for that. And then uh, the second pillar would be uh, for the establishment of new agroforestry systems. So um, then uh, the, co uh, the European Agroforestry Federation did uh, quite a bit of more uh, lobbying in uh, Brussels. and. Uh, uh, this was uh, their uh, request. So for the Pillar 1, uh, they wanted to have agroforestry also included in this uh, ecological focus area. And uh, that actually worked out. So we're very excited about that. And uh, right now it's also um, listed as, uh, yeah, under, under measures of landscape features, it, it could be measured. And uh, also the low number of trees per hectare, the 50, uh, we w yeah, Euro Europe wanted to increase those to 250. Unfortunately, that didn't quite work out. So we got up to hundreds. It's already better than 50, but still quite low. And then uh, also a definition of agroforestry was actually included in uh, the common agricultural policy. And um, uh, also uh, we wanted to extend the support or the maintenance of uh, newly established agroforestry systems uh, up to five years and that worked out as well. And then uh, also w which was present in the old legislation is that agroforestry was only funded for um, extensive agriculture and we all know that 
agroforestry is maybe even more important for the intensive agriculture for the large areas uh, where you have uh, a lot of uh, risk for wind erosion, for example. So we got that uh, connection out there. So um, yeah, this looks all very positive, actually. But <laughs> unfortunately, this is uh, the legislation uh, in Brussels and doesn't mean that this is also going to happen on the European country level, because each of the countries on their own, they get to decide whether they're going to adopt this European agri agricultural policy as well, or not. And unfortunately, most of the European countries have not adopted this. And in Germany, where I am right now, it's actually even more complicated. They decide on a Bundesland, which would be kind of a state basis, whether they're going to adopt this or not. So. You have to look at all the different state policies in, in Germany. So we need to not only lobby in Brussels, which Europe has been d doing so far, but also lobby at the national level, or even at the state level, or sometimes the county level, or <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, this is uh, what I said, some of the other work that uh, Europe is doing. Um, they're uh, participating in this uh, Egg Forward project. Uh, so that's uh, the map of the project. Uh, uh, there are uh, 26 partners, and Europe is one of them. So these are the 14 different countries. So there are quite a few partners in France, two in Spain, one in Portugal, in Italy, quite a few in Switzerland. Uh, this must be Hungary. This looks like it's in Austria, but it's not. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I know we don't have an Austrian partner, <laughs> but I know we have a Hungarian one. And uh, the lead is in the UK at uh, Grenfell University. That is uh, Paul Burgess, uh, familiar to some of you guys. And so uh, a lot of information is uh, at the Ag Forward uh, website. Very exciting. Uh, yeah. Many are working on uh, stakeholder engagement, uh, or we have been for the first year, and then uh, this year uh, we're actually going to go to our field sites and uh, carry out the research that uh, the stakeholders asked us to do. And um, in addition to uh, uh, some of the work uh, in the Act Forward project, uh, Europe is also ex active in another uh, consortium with Agroof, and it's they're mainly uh, developing educational material. Uh, which is also very important. One of the challenges we're always facing uh, in Europe is uh, the different languages. Uh, education material needs to be out there in, uh, well, probably 28 kind of <laughs> languages or more. And uh, yeah, that's uh, something you guys don't have to face at least. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, about it for, for me. And uh, so I would like to uh, thank uh, the two uh, co-authors as well, Paul Bridges and uh, Michel Den Herder, they were also the two authors of uh, this publication uh, of the stratification of agroforestry. And then uh, Rosa Mosquera and uh, Anja Chaumin of, of Europe. And uh, here are the two websites uh, where you guys can find all the information and more pretty pictures. And there's also a really nice uh, map of uh, all the new um, agroforestry projects across Europe. So a Europe uh, map with all the pictures and all the stakeholder groups. I think we have some time for a few questions. Can we turn the light up? Questions for, yeah. The question I had is, um, you have the alley crops, so with the black locusts, what are they being grown for? Are, is it, will they be harvested and then replanted? Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, with the alley cropping system, what are the black locusts uh, being grown for? Yeah, they're mainly uh, being grown for as a biomass feedstock. So for wood chips, it's actually a short rotation forestry system, so they're being harvested every four or five years. So the but that's the, the system we have in Germany. 
that has a reason because uh, the current law in Germany is that you're not allowed to grow trees for more than 20 years on agricultural land, then it's considered forestry. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of unfortunate for a lot of agroforestry systems. Cause, yeah, you can't actually have high value tree systems because of that. Yes. Um, I guess what, just kind of broad, just can you talk about the, um, the sort of national level and international, you know, the UNESCO has a lot of um, like regional sites with those cultural systems. How does that interact with how people look at adopting or preserving those systems and what you guys are doing with them? Well, the UNESCO sites, of course, they have extra regulations and uh, I know about our German site, that's a UNESCO um, biosphere reserve, and uh, the farmer actually would like, he really likes to get rid of all his uh, hetero systems, but he's not allowed to because it's a <laughs> <laughs> biosphere reserve. So sometimes in a way it's good if it's a UNESCO system. I'm not so familiar with any of the other UNESCO sites actually. Yeah, we're looking into riparian buffers as well too. Actually, yeah, there was a call for proposals in Germany, I know, that was looking into riparian buffer sy systems for phosphorus and nitrogen uptake. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, well, we're looking actually into s the interactions between the crops and, and the tree rows as part of the Egg Forward project. And there has been some land equivalent ratio uh, studies already done in France. And I believe some of the uh, systems that showed that um, the agroforestry systems actually had higher yields than uh, adjacent agricultural land. I think some of them showed even up to 40% higher. But yes? So you're asking who forms the European Agroforestry Federation? Yeah. yeah. Who funds it? Okay. Uh, well, it's mostly academics. So a lot of the work is done voluntarily, I guess. Right now, uh, the European Agroforestry has uh, European Agroforestry Federation has two employees. They're being paid out of the out of the Ag Forward project, but this is only for a two-year basis that there's money. So yeah, it's it's actually. It's kind of run like a non-for-profit, <laughs> and uh, it's yeah run on grant money. <laughs> and I will thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>